Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the concept of contract asset and contract liability. Now from the word contract, usually what we are dealing with is construction contract or long-term project. It doesn't have to be construction, but some sort of a project that's going to take several years. And that's why the word contract is there, because usually when you have a long-term project, you will sign a contract between two parties. And as a result, we could have a contract asset or a contract liability. Now, the best way to illustrate this concept of contract asset and contract liability is to walk you through an example illustrating how these accounts come into place, how these accounts such as contract asset, contract liabilities are created. So let's assume I entered into a non-cancellable agreement, and that's important, non-cancellable, to build the customized equipment for half a million, and the customer is Adam Company. So that's the deal. The agreement stipulate that I will receive 20% after signing the agreement. So after I sign the agreement, Adam will have to pay me $100,000. So what's going to happen is this. I'm going to have to invoice Adam because otherwise the one's going to pay you un unless you invoice them. So I have to invoice them. I have to create an invoice and send it to Adam for $100,000. Now, I all, although I invoiced for $100,000, I did not do any work yet. Here we have the creation of a contract liability. I did not do the work yet, but I invoiced them, but now I have the obligation to do the work. So think of contract liability. You can think of it as unearned revenue, and you're going to see at the end of the day, it looks and acts like unearned revenue. But when I sign this contract and I send the invoice, well, what's going to happen is this. I'm going to be expecting Adam Company to send me 100,000. Therefore, I will debit receivable 100,000 and I will credit a liability of 100,000. So, I what I did, I said, I have a liability now of 100,000. I expect Adam to send me a check of 100,000. Now, a week, 10 days later, or the following day, whatever that time is, I received the check. I received that money from Adam Company. What would I do then? I will debit the cash 100,000 and I will remove the receivable. So, notice what happens. At the end of the day, when all said and done, all what I have left on my books for now is the cash for 100000 sitting in the bank account. And I have a contract liability. So I want you to kind of make a T account about contract liability and put in there 100000 I don't have to tell you it's a liability. It says right there, contract liability. But that contract liability is for work needs to be performed. So what is a contract liability? So let's kind of define it a little bit, little bit more. It's the obligation. Now we have the obligation to do what? To do work for Adam Company, which is build the equipment, to transfer goods or services, to perform work. And we already received the fund, or we have an unconditional promise to get the money before start the work, before starting the work. So this is what a contract liability is. We have an obligation. We, we either receive the fund or we have unconditional promise. And that's why I emphasize the word non-cancellable agreement to tell you there is a promise and that promise is unconditional. We expect to receive the money, the, the agreement is signed and it's legally enforceable. So this is how a contract liability is created. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is what's going to happen to that contract liability and how do we create a contract asset as part of this example. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Now let's take a look at how a contract asset is created. Now remember, I signed the agreement and I'm, I started the work. And here's what I did. I'm going to incur costs. I incurred costs. I hired people. I hired contractors. I bought material. I bought supplies because I need to build that piece of equipment. And overall, for the first quarter, I incurred $120,000 in cost. Remember, the client already paid me $100,000. That's fine. I, I'm grateful for Adam. But I had to incur more cost. 
Well, I cannot build the client yet for the additional 20,000. They paid me 100,000 because I needed to work. I needed to start the work, but I incurred more cost. I am not, if I need material, if I need supplies, I'm not gonna wait. I'm gonna have to incur that cost because I know I'm gonna get this money later. But now since I, I incurred more than what I received, I cannot build the client yet. Now, why can't I build the client for that additional 20,000? It could be many reasons. It could be part of the agreement. I have to wait until the project is done. That's a condition. Or it could be, I can only build them on a yearly basis. No, I just, I just finished the first quarter. I have to wait until a year from the signing of the agreement. Or it could be, I need to reach a certain milestone, like for example, 50% done of the work before I can build them for the additional funds. Whatever it is, there is a condition and I cannot build the client that additional 20,000. Now, bear in mind, I have to debit a total of 120 total of assets because this is how much I incurred. So let's kind of keep on going. Remember, I already did 120,000 worth of work and we're going to assume this is all kind of revenue. The 120,000, it's all revenue. It could be more than 120, but let's assume it's 120. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, since I perform the work, I'm going to debit my contract liability, remove my liability for 100,000, and record 100,000 in revenue. Remember the contract liability that was created on the prior slide? I told you to create a contract liability of 100,000. Contract liability. Now I removed it. I did the work. I did this 100,000 worth of work for the cash that the customer paid me. I'm going to go a step further and tell you what's going to happen to the cash. Remember, they gave me $100,000 in cash. With that cash, I bought materials, supplies. And what I did for that, I debited the asset. I debited an asset account for $100,000 and I credited the cash because I'm assuming I'm building some sort of an inventory for Adam. Therefore, I debit the asset. So that's why whether it's material, supplies, payroll, it's all debiting some sort of an asset. So this is how I use the money. How I use the money. Now, I still have twenty thousand dollar because remember i build them for an additional twenty thousand dollar because i did i did the work i incurred the cost now the cost could be cash could be payable it doesn't really matter what do i do with this additional twenty thousand dollar that i cannot build the client yet so this is where contract asset comes into place i'm going i'm gonna have to debit contract asset which is unbilled account receivable if i can build them if i can build them it's easy if i can build them i will debit account receivable the account receivable that we know and i credit sales revenue or just revenue let's keep it consistent revenue but i cannot debit account receivable because i cannot if i invoice them they're gonna be angry they're gonna be mad they're gonna be like well this is not the deal well you can bill me you know once 50 percent is done but i need on my books i need to to know how much do I still have of unbilled account receivable. I know I'm going to receive the money because there's a condition. That's the only thing that's stopping me from billing them. Therefore, I'm going to have to debit an account called contract asset, 20,000, and I will credit revenue because I did the work. So notice 100,000 of revenue, uh, 20,000 of revenue. I have revenue of 120. Now the revenue could be higher. I just said I incurred 120 of cost and I may assume it's revenue, the revenue could be higher, but the point is we don't have to worry about the amount of revenue specifically for now, but I credit revenue. So notice how the contract asset is created. Now, once I can build them, so let's take, let's take this step further so you understand where this is gonna go. Once I can build the client, one, let, let's assume I called the client and said, look, I, I incurred an additional $20,000. Would you mind if I bill you for that? And if the customer said, yeah, sure, why not? Go ahead and bill me for that. If I can bill them, I'm going to debit account receivable 20000 and I will remove the, the contract asset of 20000 So this asset is removed because now I can bill them. Then once I receive the cash from them for that 20000 I debit cash 20000 and I will credit receivable 20000 and voila, account receivable is gone, contract is gone, all what I have left is cash of 20000 revenue of 20000 This is just take, taking it to the next step just to show you what's going to happen to all of this information, all of these accounts. So what is a contract asset? Well, simply put, we have the right, we, well, how do we have the right? We have some sort of a non-cancellable agreement to receive funds in exchange for goods and services. We have that right. And we already performed the work. But for some reason, for some condition, we cannot build a client at this time. That's fine. If we cannot build a client at this time because there's a condition, guess what? On our books, we're going to have a contract asset and we're going to record the revenue. But we cannot build a client. It's not an account receivable. Now, bear in mind, 
if the condition to build the client has to do with the passage of time. In other words, the condition is that as time goes by, I can bill you. And as time goes by, I can bill you. Then it will be a receivable. So just bear that in mind in case you get a multiple choice question about this. But this is basically, in a nutshell, contract asset and contract liability. I might work another example, but this in this illustration, I wanted to explain it. How does it all come into, how, the, how is it, like how is it created or born? How a contract liability is born? For what reason? How a contract asset is born? And how does it go away? What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, MCQs, true false, that's gonna help you understand the revenue recognition, contract asset, contract liability, IFRS 15, so on and so forth, or the uh, US standards for revenue recognition. Good luck everyone, study hard, and of course, stay safe.